Hey everyone, and welcome to the penultimate place to get your movie and TV news and reviews. That's very confusing. I have to rewrite that. Uh, this is episode 55 of the Cross Media Show, and today's topic is, of course, episode 3 and 4 of the limited series Obi-Wan Kenobi. But before we get into our discussion, if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, feel free to give us a good rating on that platform. It helps the algorithms and helps us grow our audience. If you're watching on YouTube, consider dropping a like and a sub. And don't forget to hit the bell to get all <coughs> sorry, to get notifications for all of our shows like the Penultimate Game Show, the Marvel Mondays Initiative, and Animation. If you're watching on Twitch and have Amazon Prime, you have Prime Gaming, which means you have one free sub to give out and for the love of God, please give it to us. <laughs> please. I'm begging you. I'll pay you for it. How about that? I'll pay you for it. Just, just give it out. But if not, that's quite all right. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ruben, the director of the channel. And today I am joined by two phenomenal people. Of course, we have the king of the gays, Eric. Uh, Ooh, I was going to say Eric. My apologies. <laughs> Ethan Brandon. <laughs> Ethan, it's okay. It's a, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. It's hot. It's 105. I'm, but it's I'm insanity. good. That's crazy. I'm, good. I'm so mm -hmm. sorry. It's fine. And of course, we have the best fake Twitter agent around, Jess Sanchez. Jess, how's it going? Uh, I'm close to Ethan, so also dying. Wow. Oh. But, I'm so uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> you know what? We know where we live. It's fine. You chose yeah. this life. This is your fault. <laughs> this I is mean, like, I... this is the price of never having snow. Yeah. Snow's pretty We bad. had it. Okay. We had it once when I was like five, and everybody remembers it. But yeah. Like, it was like this huge event that everyone from my generation remembers. But yeah. Huh. Interesting. I, yeah. It's kind of weird thinking of a life without snow, like just having it once. No, no, I couldn't do it. Yeah, one time, and the the whole city like had to shut down. It was like ridiculous because they didn't know how to deal with it. Jesus, it's kind of like Texas that a couple a couple days ago, a couple weeks ago. No, a couple month, a couple years ago. Jesus <laughs> Christ, <laughs> I don't time know time. Anything. Yeah, it, it's relative. It's fine. Okay, time is just a circle. <laughs> um let's get into some housekeeping before we continue the show uh this weekend uh saturday at 1 p.m eastern 10 p.m pacific we are live reacting to xbox and bethesda showcase is it going to be a letdown like uh bummer games fest we'll find out because it's got to be it's got to be you know xbox has 26 studios and one of, those games, one of those games is coming out this year. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so come hang out with us. Come talk uh, Xbox and Bethesda. And after the show, we are going to be doing a post show for obviously Xbox and Bethesda. But we are also going to be doing a post show for Bummer Games Fest. So we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty sure you can tell where where I, what my thoughts are. But um guys, before we get into Obi-Wan Kenobi, what else have you been watching? Ethan, let's start off with you. Okay. So, um the other Disney Plus show that dropped on Wednesday, Miss Marvel. There was another I one. loved it. So I'm kidding. Well, yeah, Miss Marvel. <laughs> I was like, "Wait, hold on." But Miss Marvel is so good. I so good that as soon as it finished, I watched that episode again just because I liked it Ow. so much. I, it's I it's my favorite Marvel like Marvel show like so far. Okay, I have yet to watch it. Um, I believe if I remember correctly, on Monday we're going to be talking about it. So uh, we'll see how it goes. The trailers, I wasn't so hyped up on the trailers. I really don't like the fact that she's got the comic book. Stuff coming out, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, there's, yeah, a, lot I, I, there's a lot of that. There's like, a lot of that. First five yeah. minutes. First five minutes. Mm. Through the entire episode. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, may not be for you, but I don't know what it is. I just, I loved it. I mean, also, I was... the Go new ahead. Star Trek. 
Strange New Worlds is dope. Okay. Um, yeah. The right. only reason I pay for Paramount Plus. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that and RuPaul's Drag Race. They, they got me mm-hmm. okay. with. All right. But. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Jess, what have you been watching? So I just watched Fire Island on Hulu, which it was is so good. So good. It's a Pride and Prejudice retelling featuring a mostly Asian and all gay cast. Uh, and it is hilarious and dramatic and just so heartwarming and silly. And, and, and like they do Pride and Prejudice like real, real well. Yeah. <laughs> And so, it has our I, it has our it has our boy Oliver from How to Get Away with Murder in it. I love him Conrad, so much. I'm, Conrad Ricamora. Yes. Is perfection. So when you first what? said Fire Island, I thought you were talking about the Jaw Rule thing. I forgot what it was called. Um, Fire Fest. There you go. Fire, Fire Fest. Fest. That's why. Okay. All right. <laughs> no. Okay. The complete opposite of Fire Fest. So not a for everyone. Show. <laughs> it, was, it, it, it was a good thing. Okay. Anything else? So good. I just started For All Mankind, which I am very excited about. They've got a new season starting this next week, I think. Um, and I hadn't seen any of it, but like space stuff and alternate histories are both extremely my jam. Yeah. So I'm really excited about okay. this show. I'm enjoying yeah. it. Yeah. I watched season one. Season one was great. And I haven't seen any but i know a new season is coming so i'm gonna binge it where's the show it's on apple tv gotcha okay all right cool anything else i i also love miss marvel the family just so cute and it's really funny because i can one of the things that you really like notice with that show is like are you watching it from the team like from the perspective of like the teen protagonist or are you watching it from the perspective of like an adult who's like, okay, but the parents have a point. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that was my thing. I was like, I can total, I can totally see both sides of this. I'm like, I can see where Kamala's coming from because yeah, but like the parents are just trying their best too. I was like, it's, oh, I'm thir- I'm 30 now. Yeah, the, from a family but, perspective, mm-hmm. like it really, it's a good family. It's a it's a loving, supportive. Uh, family and i just uh, highly recommend that show it's really good i know you know the comic book stuff like is prominent okay yeah (laughs) do you think you're gonna get tired of it in the next three episodes you know i thought about it because it it did seem like a lot but the thing is that it's not the same thing over and over it's different things done stylistically like in a different way so it's not it, it's it stays interesting. We'll see if that continues throughout the series because I mean, like, you know, how you, creative can you consistently mm-hmm. be? Right. You know what it reminded me of? It remind uh, it reminded me of Into the Spider Verse. The way Very that that so. okay, mm-hmm. all right, all yeah, right. okay. As long as it's it, not like too flaunty, you know. No, it, it no. has big Spider Verse vibes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Then I can deal with that. I can deal with that. Not so much like, like my thing, I was like, are they trying to be like Scott Pilgrim? But then someone was like, no, it's like into the Spider Verse. Like, look at the way they're doing it. Yeah. But the thing about Scott Pilgrim is that it was really bad, you know? (sighs) But that's not the over there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That that hurts my soul. Somebody made me watch that movie (laughs) for the first time and I had no idea what it was about. And... I saw Michael Sarah and I was like, "Oh, good! This is, I, I like Michael Sarah. It's gonna be really, really good." And then I, at the end, I was just very confused and was like, "Why? Why is this a movie?" It's it's a fun movie that definitely um, is not a. It's it's a comic book story. It's definitely <laughs> very much a comic yeah. book. Story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, I have been watching uh, Stranger Things. I finished it, the, I think, this week. I'm not sure. Oh, cool. Very, very good. I'm excited for part two. Very good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that's it, other than uh, Obi-Wan. I, like I said, I haven't watched uh, Ms. Marvel. Uh, I'll probably watch it later today or tomorrow. Um, yeah. I mean, Stranger I'll give you Things props, is going to be Stranger, you know? 
Stranger Things are basic, like that's basically four, well, eight, seven films because they're so the episodes are so yeah, long. Yeah. So the thing so, is, I thought it was going to be this. I thought this was going to be the last season, and then Ryan came up and was like, "No, they're making another season." Yeah, I think people got confused because they announced season four and that it was going to be a longer season, and right. you're going to basically get two seasons worth of content, right. and then. Then they announced season five at the same time, and they were like, it's going to be the final season. So I think people's wires got crossed. That's probably mm. what it was. And mm-hmm. I feel like this is, they should have saved this format, you know, b- releasing two parts for season five. Mm. They'll probably, they probably will do that, and it'll probably be even more prominent, I would imagine. Yeah. Like, I, I like the fact that each episode is getting longer and longer. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that they stick with that for next season. We'll, we'll see. Be- because, like, my thought is I think they're going to do, like, the Breaking Bad thing, and they're testing it with the- with season four yeah. to see how well it does. We just see uh, Eleven as Heisenberg, and she just says, say my name. <laughs> say my name. <laughs> Mike, say my name. <laughs> um. Okay, cool. So, I guess this means we're going to get into the topic of the show. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, episode three and four. What are our thoughts on this show so far? Jess, let's start with you. So, it's it's doing interesting things because we, we're not getting like a consistent, it doesn't feel like we're getting a consistent tone from episode to episode. Every episode really feels um, very different. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's accomplishing different things depending on where their focus is. You know, um, I love the, the actors that have, I, I don't think there's been a bad performance so far. Uh, shout oh, out. The to, droid was really, really bad. No, I love the droid. The droid is, <laughs> the droid is so good. I can't even say that. With what? <laughs> like, no, yeah, he was really good. Like you cannot talk <laughs> any kind of crap about any of my metal babies. They are no. all my babies, <laughs> except Lola. But we'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. <clears throat> um, you know, I, 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 I think a shout out especially to Zach Braff for completely disappearing into the role of bootlicker. Couldn't even tell you that was Zach Braff. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No way. Somebody mentioned that to me the other day, and I was like, huh. I feel like I've watched Scrubs enough to notice Zach Braff's voice. Couldn't even tell you that was him. No. Me either. I'm like, I'm shocked right right now. That's crazy. A little, like, when you know it's him, if you watch it again, Mm -hmm. um, you kind of get a little bit of his intonations, like, in the way he says things. No. You could totally hear it, like, what the heck? <laughs> but for me, it was definitely, like, ooh. I, I love all of the characters so far. Um, I, I think they all have, you know, different strengths and weaknesses within the show that are interesting. There have been some interesting choices in terms of, like, where the plot is going. But um, I, I, I'm, so far, I'm, I'm still in. I'm not exactly sure where we're going, but I'm in. Okay. All right. That's cool. Uh, Ethan, what about you? I, 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 I'm loving it. I, this show, I mean, just talking from episode to episode, Jess is right in that every episode like manages to feel different, but yet they're still telling one connected story way better than I think even the other shows like have. Cause like, this feels way more connect. This feels like one single product way more than like Book of Boba Fett, or mm-hmm. that even the even the Mandalorian does. Like sometimes, especially Book of Boba Fett, because Book of Boba Fett basically turns into season two point five of the Mandalorian, and then yes. it's like finishes. Yeah. yeah. So, but this feels like a movie that they split yeah. up, and they were like, "We're releasing it in six different parts." Like. And this is probably my favorite of the Star Wars shows, like, so far. Um, I really like... um, uh, Oh, my gosh. I like the... um, 
the little Leia. She's so I love her so much. I loved yeah. her in episode three. Like when oh god, I just I don't know where they found this little girl, but it's like they shrank. It's like they shrank <laughs> down Carrie Fisher and yeah. just like reproduced her. I don't know. She is the best. Ewan has not like he has not missed a step. You can tell he's just enjoying himself. Mm. Um, I would even say the same thing about Hayden, even though you, we can't like necessarily see him all the time. Mm-hmm. Like you can tell they're just having fun, like doing this and just being back. And and uh, um, what's the actress's name that plays the third sister? I forget. Oh, uh, um, Moses Ingram. Thank yes, you. I love her. Um, like again, you can just tell like she's having so much fun just being this like antagonist. And I love that we get, we get to see the inquisitor, like the inquisitor in live action, right. like really for the first time I, and she was so good in episode three. Cause you can tell she wants to like, she wants to move, but she's holding herself back because like, she wants to impress Vader. And then when Vader steps onto the field, like she's still doing what she's doing but she's letting Vader like take um, lead. Yeah. And much. You, you know, so, and then like in episode four, when, when she has that moment with Leia, but we'll get there, but it's just so good. I, I, I love, like, I love everything about this, but I'm, I'm an easy to please like star Wars, man. I like, all of this, like, and it's giving like Easter eggs and different little things. And I'm yeah. like, this is so good. Yeah. Um, I did put up a rank, uh, not a rank, a poll yesterday asking people what their, uh, preferred, um, storyline. If they were doing a new star Wars show, where would you prefer the story to be? Uh, I asked uh, during the prequels or after the prequels, after this, the originals or after the sequels, what do you guys prefer? Jess? So, so I've, I've really enjoyed um, post-sequel pre-originals stories. Okay. Um, they do, they, they did take a little while to, to grow on me. Rogue One, for whatever reason, didn't initially click with me. When it finally did, it was like amazing. But, um, you know, I even enjoy that world building because we really got so little of it in the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. I, I agree you know? too. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's yeah. my favorite in terms of just like where I would like to see more stories. Okay. Because, because especially like, okay. For Tala one, I freaking love Tala. She's amazing. She is you know, if you if you think about the Star Wars story as an allegory for like fascism and World War Two, Paula really steps in as like, you know, historically female double agents who have, you know, either worked one side or the other or sabotaged from within. You know, there's a long history of of, of like spies who go unnoticed because of, you know, their skin color or their gender. And, like, I just love her stepping into that role, um, even if it's not something that it's something that's a little bit more like subtexty than like overt. Right. Um, just me, again, love alternate history stuff. So anytime anything like that gets acknowledged, I, I'm, I eat it up. And, and also she's ridiculously talented and gorgeous. Like, come on. Yeah, yeah, I agree. OK, so, Ethan, you're in the same boat. Uh, for for me, I was going to say um, I'm going to say something like completely different. I want to see whatever that Acolyte series is going to be for the High Republic. Um, oh, yeah. Because I love those books so much. And the world, which is still Star Wars. It's still the Star Wars that we know. But it's so far back in the past, though, that you're getting all these new little tidbits. And I want to see what the what the Acolyte does. Because supposedly it's going to be like not right before episode one, but close enough that things start to actually connect. But I would agree because one of the coolest things I, I saw at celebration and I keep watching the trailer because it's so cool and so well done the way they did it is Andor. 
because it's showing like Mon Mothma and what she's doing Mm -hmm. and, and like how, and it shows like the Imperial Senate and you see Coruscant for the first time since episode three. And I'm like, this is the stuff I loved about Star Wars as a kid because I, I was that weird kid who loved all the politics and all the different Mm -hmm. little like machinations and just as right. We never really got that in the originals because all they said in the originals was, Oh yeah, the Senate's been dissolved and it's being taken care of by, by these yeah. different governors. That's all we got. And then it just kind of went on. And I feel like, Andor, we're going to see that either start or happen. And I just I want to see it. And oh, I, just, I love where these different like shows, especially for that era, because there's, People say there's a lot for that era, but I'm like, there's so much like untapped like potential still that they could go into like before episode four. Ethan, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. Well, what's up? I've heard from some sources that the acolyte. Mm-hmm. I don't want to burst your bubble here, but he's gonna be a Skywalker. Oh, Shh, don't say anything. <laughs> don't say I mean, anything. Oh, sh- I'm I'm okay with that. Okay. All right. <laughs> Somehow, Wait, somewhere, no, I'm, I'm just I'm totally joking. There's no way that I could possibly oh know that. But from what I've seen so Wait. far, they're gonna try to, to uh, try their best to incorporate it into the Skywalker saga. So my my theory, my off the wall tinfoil hat theory, is the acolyte is going to be Darth Plagueis. Uh, I thought you were going to say Obi-Wan's dad. I would have been like, holy shit, that would have been crazy. Well, <laughs> his brother. Uh, <laughs> Qui-Gon Jinn. Well, you do know that that technically it Wedge is his uncle and his daughter has been in Star Wars now as well. You, I'm talking like Ewan. His real, oh, his real life? Oh, yeah, daughter. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Um, So... I guess I have to ask. We've kind of already tapped into this, but our thoughts on where the story is going so far. I personally am. Oh, that's kind of the same question. Ooh, sorry, guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me answer it, I guess. Um, I personally am. Pr- this is probably my favorite Star Wars show that we've had. Um, I, for one, kind of like. Th- the uh, shows after the prequels just because like you don't really have anything after that like that can top Darth Vader as a main villain like you know yeah. when we're watching Mando I'm like okay this is cool and everything and I kind of want to see where uh, Baby Yoda I forgot his name Grogu is g- what's going to happen with Grogu but like eh. I'm I'm okay, you know. Like other mm. than that, like eh. meh. Book of Boba Fett was just like you, Ethan said, Mando part season two point five. You know, we got like three minutes of uh, Boba Fett in that entire series. Um, <clears throat> for episode four, when we saw the back to tank, I was like, oh no, what what are we doing here? Why are we doing this? And then immediately he got taken out. And I, he got taken out, and I was like, "Okay, good." Um, I I did really enjoy the duality of that scene. Like, there's no way that they were not like force sensing each other. Oh, oh yeah. that's exactly what they it was. totally were. They totally were like fighting each other through the force. That's <gasps> exactly mm, what it was. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad I wasn't the only person that picked up on it. Okay, good, good, good. good. Um. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see where this goes. Uh, I saw a uh, TikTok of, of somebody saying, like, it's six episodes for a reason because each episode is going through kind of like the phases of the movies. Um, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we'll see what happens uh, at the end of this show, you know? Um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much where I got. Um the next question I have here is, do we like where Obi-Wan's character growth is going, if there is any? Yes. We, yeah? Yeah, 100%. I love, I love when Jedi can be, like, 
I love Luke Skywalker in Last Jedi, and this is totally giving me that vibe. Like, mm-hmm. he, he's down, he's, like, having to deal with his, like, his demons. I love stories that do that. But when, the sto- when the series was coming out, someone, some, one of the critics compared it to, like, Logan, and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Mm. It, like, to- it totally is, because it's like, you know, he's off by himself, He's doing his own thing, and then he has to rescue this little girl that, and then basically confront his past through her, yeah. and and I, it's, it's just so good. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah uh, I definitely I appreciate because if you think about um, if you think about where we left Obi at the end of you know episode three, he's heartbroken. You know, mm-hmm. he's he is absolutely a broken a broken man. He's lost everything. Yeah. Literally everything that he had. And when he talks in episode three about like the family that he had lost prior to that, you really like you realize just how little he has left to hold on to. His you know, and, and so it it's not shocking that like in episode one and two he or one, he's so reluctant to leave Luke's side. Because yeah. that's, that's literally all he has left. Um, and I appreciate that, you know, after meeting Leia and really, like, seeing how much she is uh, the daughter of Padme. Yeah. And, and Anakin's daughter. Like, he, she's, she's very much their kid. Like, she's, she's got them bursting at the seams. So. Are you my real you know, father? <laughs> oh. oh, my God. <laughs> oh. That broke my heart. I was like, no. It was like, even she knows something's up. Like, oh. I, that hurt. That hurt. You know, she just... That poor little girl. Anyway. <laughs> I, I just... I really appreciate that he's now like, yeah. I'm going to put a bunch of people at risk to save this little girl. Because now she also means everything to me. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of funny, you know, the first thing <laughs> he said, he was like, no, find somebody else to do this. It, mm-hmm. it yeah. shows how much she's grown right. on him in the small amount of time we've gotten. I think, too, it shows that he was very unwilling to con- basically confront everything. And But Jess is right. He didn't want to leave because leaving Luke. But, yeah, it's like... And, like, this little girl is calling him out because every time he has a moment, she's like, let's talk about it. Yeah. Like, like, she's six years old and she's like, we're going to How does that make it. you feel? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I did have one question that popped up in my head for this, uh, for episode four. Do we know if, well, I mean, I guess this is kind of a question that we might already know, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do we know if uh, Darth Vader knows that Leia is his daughter. No, he does not. He does not. No. Okay. I mean, yeah, because he interacts with her, you know, consistently throughout. Well, we assume because in Episode Four, when you know we first are introduced to them together, she's just straight up. I thought I smelled your stench. Like mm. they have interacted before, right? right. You know, <clears throat> and, uh, like... and, and not in a respectful way. Yeah. And I'm like, I want part of me, and like, it's not going to end well. But I would love a scene with stick, like nine year old Leia, and this like big old towering dude, and she's just like, oh, you, you are, ew, ew. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but this kind of thing, like where they've been in close proximity to each other, but mm. have always missed each other. Yeah, like used to happen in Legends canon as well. And it was always kind of the same thing where um, she could sense something in him and he could in her, but it was always like in passing though. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Um, okay, cool. Do you guys have any questions, uh, I guess, pr- pr- primarily on episode three and four? I have like questions just like that are, kind of throughout the whole thing you know mm-hmm. i enjoy seeing um 
I mean, I'm going to keep calling him Bootlicker. I don't remember his name. Uh, it's, it's, it's like Meeks or something. I don't know. Oh, uh, I wrote it down. And... What's interesting about his character really is, I mean, there's a lot of things, obviously, but but I really enjoy Freck, this concept. Freck. Yes. There you go. Freck the bootlicker. Um, who <laughs> he doesn't have like official merch. He makes his own, you know, <laughs> to show his loyalty to the empire. Yeah, and and you know, it's it's the way that he just like picks them up and is like he seems so friendly and he seems so outgoing. And Leia, of course, thinking the best out of everyone because she's nine or whatever, you know. Naive. She's like they're totally fine. Yeah. You know, I think people are basically good, which they are, but you know, sometimes they're bootlickers. I'll stop saying it. Um, no, good dude. No, 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 I'm not. He's a perfect way to he's, describe he's, him. You know, he, it really shows you like you cannot necessarily tell what is a threat in a fascist society um, just based on like, you know, there's good people everywhere, right. um, you know, kind of thing. But, but what really, you know, He's so familiar with all of the stormtroopers. You know, they know him by name. He understands their schedule and he's, you know, knows where to take them, all this stuff. Which makes me think, like, Tala, come on, man. You couldn't have, like, done something about that. I don't know. Yeah, I also... I I, I kind of thought that, too. I was like, <laughs> how often did they cross paths? Like... It has to be often. It's her outpost. Mm, this is yeah. true. Yes. But I also feel like... Uh, you know the stormtroopers could have kept him in line, but mm-hmm. you know they're stormtroopers. What are you really going to do? You know they can yeah. barely shoot at somebody. Um, <laughs> let alone enforce well, authority. I guess. Where was Freck on January sixth? Uh, That's my. Question. He was right there in front. <laughs> he was the one that started it all. You know. Um. I guess what I should do is read the plot synopsis for both part three and four. So let me do that first. Uh, For episode three, Vader instructs Reva to find Kenobi, promising to promote her to Grand Inquisitor if she succeeds. Kenobi and Leia's transport lands on the mining planet Mapuzo, and they proceed to the rendezvous provided by Haja. Finding nobody there, uh, they take a ride on an Imperial transport. They are... uh, discovered and imperial troops are sent to capture them but they receive help from an, a female imperial officer tala who is a member of a secret sorry who is a member of an underground network the path that hides dissidents and outlaws hunted by the empire which obviously this is you know the thing that inspires leia to you know just do everything that she's done in the in the future movies and well, yeah, just future movies, which is kind of cool. Like, we finally get to see, like, why. She, well, like, yeah. we know why she's doing it because the Empire is a bunch of assholes. But, like, it is nice to see something that affects her in a way when she's so young. Like, mm-hmm. no, I have to do the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's in my notes. Like, I. When. This I think it finally clicked with like episode three. I was like, this is the the adventure that kind of sets Leia like on her path. Right. And not on, not only that, but even in the future when she has Ben, I'm like the reason she names her son Ben Solo isn't because like her brother had like this we you know had this relation. It's because of this moment right here. Now, she we got over this last week. So in a galaxy far far away what happens is the naming tradition is on the uncle, you know? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it makes sense. I'm sorry. <laughs> continue. <laughs> so yeah, no, that was, I was just like, it's cool to see, like, even with this new thing, like there's so many different connect, they're making so many different connections to the movies right down to the fact that Leia is wearing very similar outfits to what she wears mm-hmm. in the respective films of the episodes. I'm like, this is cool. Yeah. Like they really paid attention. So, um, yeah, it, it's very cool. Uh, although, you know, Leia, yeah. you could have maybe gone a little better with the design, not just copying the, uh, 
Paths logo, I guess. Man. I'm just saying, copyright infringement is still a thing in the galaxy far, far away. Uh, is it though? I mean, you know, obviously, you're getting tracked down by the Empire. Like, you're not going to pursue legal action, but <laughs> the um, the Emperor has a, pa- a patent office. He's like, yeah, you got to fill out those patents. <laughs> yeah, make sure that copyright's up to date. Otherwise, that's it. You're done for. Um, she escorts them to a secret t- a subterranean passageway, but before they can leave, Vader and the Inquisitors arrive and begin to harm innocent bystanders to lure Kenobi. And honestly, out of all the Darth Vader scenes we've seen, this one was the one that scared me the most. Yeah, he has yep, a reputation yep. in the galaxy, and this is uh, this is why. Yeah, like the Rebels. This, sorry, yeah. sorry, Ethan, go ahead. <laughs> No, I was going to say, this is the most unhinged, I guess would be the word. Like, right. we've we've seen him, like, but this is the hallway Vader from Rogue One, mm-hmm. but amped up, and everybody knows that this is how he is. Right. And he's, still, and he's still got that Anakin anger, like, he's still got the Anakin side, too. Right. And so, he is fully, like, enraged and just, uh, like... So good. It's so good. Yeah. And James Earl Jones doing that. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad he's still okay. alive for him to come back. 91. The guy is 91 and he's doing it even better than like he did. Oh my God. Right? That's it. what I also thought. Like he's doing uh, it even better than he did the last time, I, which I don't remember which when he came I back. Bet, I bet he does the voice for fun. He would do the he, voice for fun. 100%. 100%. Again, everybody that's making the show is just having a blast with it, including yeah. him. You you know he's in the booth and he's just hamming hamming it up. Yeah, yeah. Like So good. So good. Um Vader and the Inquisitors arrive and begin to harm innocent... Oh, I already said that. Kenobi sends Leia and Tala ahead while he provides a distraction. And I don't really know if this was a a distraction uh, or a game of cat and mouse, and he was the mouse. That's distracting. I I I mean, is it really distracting? distracting. Yeah. I feel like he's the main reason they're here, you know? like He knew. He's, but he's willing to sacrifice himself for Leia. Like, yeah. he knows. Yeah. Which, like I said, big step up from episode one where mm-hmm. he was like, nah, I don't think so. I'm going to stay here with Luke, you know? Yeah. 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 You know, it, it, it's because, you know, Ben obviously knows. Obi, Obi obviously knows that Leia is important. He knows why she's important and he knows what it would mean if, if Vader found out who she is. So... Yeah, mm-hmm. technically, it's not really a distraction when he was the target in the first place, but it, for Ben, yeah, yeah, it is a distraction. Yeah, I, I like, yeah. Is- not yeah, not to mention you have this group of people who are essentially converted Jedi, and if they get a hold of Leia and they find out who Leia is, you know they'll make her an Inquisitor. Absolutely, like, and that mm-hmm. would mm-hmm. just be horrific. Yeah. But I'm also kind of liking the Inquisitors uh, as characters. Like I'm, it brings kind of fresh blood to the to Star Wars series for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, where it's just not like outlaws that are, are just shooting people. You know what I'm saying? Like again, it comes back to the Mando, where it's not like. Uh, yeah, I, I I kind of agree. Yeah. My favorite part of Star of Star Wars is the lightsabers and the space wizards, and right. so if you have more of that or a different version of that, like, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, I have Christian in the chat who's just talking a whole bunch of slander, um, but he did ask, "What did uh, everybody think of O'Shea Jackson Jr.?" Which I'm not sure who that is. Let me find <laughs> out. Oh, yeah. yes, he was the guy from episode four where he Obi-Wan asked him for help. And uh, he's like, no, we're not doing this. And then changed it up. Okay, I uh, I was yelling at Obi-Wan. Like, as soon as he was like, you don't know what the Empire is capable of. And I'm like, look, bro, just because you've been in a hole doesn't matter uh, that you've been in a hole. Yeah. Like, these uh, people know better than you do. 
Step back. I was like, Stay in your lane. Like, my guy, like, it's been 10 years. They they know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're the reason they why know. they know, you know? <laughs> yeah. Not everyone can just hide in some sort of a weird processing plant on Tatooine, bro. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. Like, not everybody can get a job at a power plant or whatever. I don't know what that place was, but... Uh, Meatpacking plant. I'm gonna yeah. 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 Oh, how the mighty have but fallen. He was he was a, a really good character, and I and you felt you felt his exhaustion. You felt his just exasperation of like. Yeah. Like he's probably had hundreds of rescue missions. Yeah. Come across his and, desk, you know. It's so you funny know, that you said that because whatever when he started talking and he was like, uh, "No, we're not doing this." It reminded me of GTA Four. Ah, oh, shit! Here we go again. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the worst, the worst part is like, this is really in the grand scheme of things for us, the audience. This is still the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like they're all, they're all so already so exhausted. It's been a decade of you know the empire rising to power and really in the grand scheme of things they're just getting started because yeah. mm-hmm. the empire doesn't fall till return of the jedi right like so you really feel for these characters who are already just so done including leia's parents by the way who yeah. leia doesn't know what they do yet but like everybody's just so all just done with it all and really they're they're not done yet yeah. 10 years quite, is a for, long time. Yeah. Honestly, 10 years is a long time. And if I was any of Obi-Wan's, you know, coworkers, I would, I would be staring at the most wanted posters, you know, just to <laughs> be for like, real. can we get a fucking break here? Like, what the fuck? Because he didn't, he didn't really like change his appearance either. He didn't do it's anything. So- <laughs> he just it looks like it. He just decided, you know what? I can turn off my side of the force. It, it's fine. Uh, it yeah. should be fine. Uh, yeah, but it's like when they're on Mapuzo and and she says, "Look up, look like." Yeah. And then it's like it's like, oh my god, Obi, you're done. Like you're already done because like I would have had look, like just uh, just do a mohawk, face tattoos, <laughs> face tattoos, look, mohawk. Like. There's okay. There's literally an episode of Clone Wars where he face changes and turns into this weird bounty hunter yeah. type character. Yeah, yeah. You're telling me we don't have the like if Mission Impossible can have that fucking face thing. Like you're telling me we don't have that in a galaxy far far away. Unbelievable. I, I yeah. bet there was like an ethical plastic surgeon somewhere in the galaxy who like on the down low was doing well, like bone I, alterations for we, Jeff. I mean, we get that yeah. guy that's doing the cybernetic surgery. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Love him. Love I him. want robotic. So. I want, I want to be a cyborg so bad. Interesting. I did not know about that. This, I did not know this about you, that you're very, um, yeah. 100%. Okay. No, hundred percent. I, I okay. agree. Replace these legs, please. <laughs> <laughs> anyway yeah you kidding me anyway that's not important um <laughs> no but but i it's you know you see that it's 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 probably an organization that is it's not at its peak you know yeah. it 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 is looking for maybe new funding you know we don't know yet if if leia's family is involved with this specific organization we just mm-hmm. know that this one has some empire involvement and uh, runs through a couple of different planets. Like we we don't know how far it goes yet, and and there's probably a lot of that. You know, there's probably a lot of different cells on a lot of different systems, um, and what they need is a charismatic, adorable leader who is way too big for her britches to organize them. I feel like. <laughs> The Orgatas are involved, and after this is all done, her father's her father's gonna be like, "It's time for me to show you something." I, and you then, know what? I 100 percent think that's probably where it's gonna end up. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, oh, you see, I thought you were saying that they were involved in the Empire's doings, but yeah. Well, no, no, no. Oh, no, but no. We know no. that they have double agents in the M. Like you right, know that right. Ola wasn't the only one. Right. Which right. also is why I would like to see more stuff about like pre, like like post prequel, because when she says like the Empire stood for something, and we see that a little bit in Solo as well, mm-hmm. where he's we're like recruiting Solo. people. <laughs> okay, but it does. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, we see that their, you know, generic military presence, um, you know, and and you, you, you I want to see how that played out. You know, I would really like yeah. to see the PR machine of the Empire, you know, and how it's, they they've got so many people to their side. It's almost very because especially with the Andor stuff, because just the stuff in the trailers and Mon Mothma being like, I'm being watched all the time. And it's almost very, like, on the outside, the PR machine is being like, the Empire is great. Kind of very, like, North Korea-ish. Yeah. Or, you know, and then... They got a gun to all my the head. People, just, just agree. Yeah, all the people on the inside that are more in the know are like, yeah, no, this is real fucked up. Yeah. Like, But you're going to have zealots. Like, you're always going to have mm-hmm. zealots. And I just, I would love to see that story really laid out and it might be in the extended universe somewhere i don't know this is a huge thing yeah uh hugo's in the chat and says uh jimmy smith's is with the rebellion right from the start uh yeah yeah and that's what i also figured uh from the first episode where he was talking to uh that other senator trying to get uh funding if i remember that oh mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so i feel like he's trying to get some funding for a little something something on the side you know Oh my god! Right. Okay, little little sidebar, but that part where they're at, they're at the party and Leia like calls out her cousin and she pulls a Kylo Ren at him. Yeah, like oh my god, I love like, it so much. Like mother, like father, uh, like <laughs> mother, like son. Yeah, she's like, yeah, you like. She basically calls him out, and he's just like, and I was like, this girl, she's nine years old, and she's already like taking names. Yeah. I love it. So, um, Kenobi sends Leia and Tala ahead while he provides a distraction. Uh, he is eventually confronted by Vader, who overpowers Kenobi with his f- uh, with his force choke and burns him. And man, oh man, I really oh. thought we were going to see the opposite of Episode Three, where he's like, "You were my brother, and you made me do this." Oh, and he kind of says, "You made me do this." I <laughs> mean. Yeah, we kind of did. Yeah. Also, the, the I am what you made me yes. line is yes. amazing. Yes. I was that... talking to Ethan a little bit about this. And, you know, it's another thing that I would like to see. I just really like getting into really scary perspectives, I guess. Is, um, you know, seeing that uh, the Battle of Mustafar from Anakin's perspective. Because from what we know, like... Padme came in there to try and betray him because she's with Obi-Wan now and, you know, Obi-Wan was trying to kill him to get him out of the way. Yeah. Like, we know, like, Obi-Wan could have killed him. Could have taken his head instead of his legs. Like, we know if Obi-Wan wanted him dead, he probably would have been dead. He could have had the high ground. He had the high ground. Mm -hmm. Well, did he leave him in a thoroughly messed up state that like honestly is kind of worse than killing him like, yes absolutely yeah <laughs> and now he's yeah. getting his just desserts <laughs> but you know it it's it's from anakin's perspective like his hatred is justified absolutely uh, i, I was gonna know, say this this series is doing a really good job of justifying vader's anger yeah. like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely and you know what I got to say, guys, I'm kind of with Vader up until he decides, mm. like, I'm going to rule the entire galaxy, you know? Like, just yeah. to get his revenge. I'm kind of with him. Okay, so my thing, and I told Jess this too, is Padme comes. Padme comes to Mustafar, right? She comes down to Mustafar. Anakin sees her. They have this conversation. He's already mistrustful of Obi-Wan because he's had the vision of him. So mm-hmm. he knows that eventually like he's going to come into play. So he, that mistrust is there already. And then, and then Obi-Wan basically pops up out of the bathroom, which yeah, yeah, yes. like, 
<laughs> you know, if I answered that question, thanks Star Wars Episode Three. I always wondered that, like, do they go to the bathroom in space? But um, basically, comes out of the ship and confirms, from Anakin's perspective, like Jess said, confirms all of his suspicions, and he's like, "Well, like, he's here, so you're here to betray, like, betray me." And even if she talks him down, yeah. like, that's why Obi Wan feels just as responsible for he's responsible for Padme's death as well because if he didn't go away that could have played out different absolutely or it mm-hmm. still wouldn't yeah. have been good no <laughs> but it no. would have been good Padme probably, been no Padme probably would have still died but um you know it probably would have still had the same outcome or but it would have been like that's why I think too Obi feels just as responsible for both the twins and Padme as well. That's why you get the scenes where he's like, You remind me so much of your mother and yeah. that scene that scene in episode three where they're having that conversation and she he's spinning this story and Leia kinda clues in and she's like, Oh, this is real. Yeah. Like and again that connects back to Return of the Jedi because Leia says that thing about well, we know Padme now where she's like, oh, I remember my mother. That could be because Obi-Wan told her. Right, right. Um, I have a couple things that I want to say. First off, Obi-Wan, you couldn't have popped out literally five minutes before you popped out and be like, you know what? I need you to stay here. I got to go talk to Anakin myself, you know? Right. Yeah. My guy. But... You, it still would have ended up like, why are you in my girl's ride? <laughs> yeah. I would have been yeah. like, yeah, I stole the ship because mine was fucked up. You know, <laughs> my droid. And watching my R4, yeah. R4? Was R4, R4, yes. R4, R4, oh, yeah, oh wow. Look at me pulling shit out of the look fucking at you. atmosphere. R4 droid, <laughs> like he, 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 he didn't know where the fuck Mustafar was. So I, I had to, <laughs> I had to, yeah, I had to do this solo, you know, but, uh, Part of me too when I because I rewatched the first I watched rewatched the prequels before I watched and I'm like as an adult I could totally read Obi Wan and Padme like as a thing yeah like, possibly yeah I've seen well, a lot of people say not, that and and well I have the Clone Wars as context so because so I know he he had a thing with um, Satine which I hope that gets referenced but um, I thought we were gonna see her in Episode Four. I, I hope that gets referenced like somehow. I hope she's connected to his name, like yeah. the Ben, like yeah. alias name. But, mm-hmm. um, I, but like if I didn't know that as context, I'm like, yeah, I could totally see why people think that. Like, mm-hmm. cause he cares so much about her too, just in different ways. They are closer in age. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are they really? <laughs> they are. Well- yeah. Well, because I know uh, Anakin and her are five years apart. How old are? Do we know how old uh, Obi Wan is? Because in episode we, one? I don't think we know exactly how old he is, but he's still a Padawan. You know? Yeah, he's in my mind. He's like seventeen. He's like seventeen, eighteen when they first meet. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. 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 So she's like fifteen, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. We know how old. He is. That's yeah. it. Um, okay. All right. I forgot where I was. Oh, uh, I guess. Bro got burned. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, got burned. Bro, yeah. Tala provides yeah, distraction to see. Oh, before we, I continue, I had one question and it's always something that is kind of like a multiversal thing. What if Qui-Gon was just still alive to train Anakin? Do you think this whole this thing would have... It would have been avoided. So Darth this Maul is to blame for everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I really think that Qui-Gon would have been like, yo, you guys, that guy's evil. He's trying to take Anakin. All of this is bad. Yeah. Every, like. Okay. All right. I'm trying to think how much interaction Qui-Gon had with Palpatine as a senator. Right. I don't think Did he they had inter- much. I mean, no, they, I they probably so. had some, like, you know, off screen and, you know, canon type ways, but yeah. we never saw them together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. 
This would have been no. really cool if he's like, listen, if he just gave us the, the Taken speech uh, <laughs> <laughs> just in episode three, I don't know what you want. I don't know what you're looking for, but I will find you. And the, all that other stuff. I will say, if like there's an alternate Star Wars or whatever, the Qui-Gon, if there was a, a Qui-Gon versus the Anakin fight, like in episode three, mm-hmm. and them having to have like a conversation, like, uh, yeah, that would have been really cool. Yeah. But I really I really think like he would have clocked in almost immediately and be like, yeah, this is all of this is fucked up. He's trying to take over the Senate. Um, and for some reason, he's interested in this kid. And I can't figure out why. Yeah. But... yeah, I think I think I think Qui-Gon would have allowed for more Shades of Grey than Obi-Wan mm. did, you know, and, and I think Anakin really needed that because he's, you know, even if we're not just going off of, you know, he's Anakin, he's old to be starting training you know they yeah. generally take younger than that which is its own messed up thing but we're you know gonna leave that alone um you know he he came from a place of slavery and left his mother in slavery you know and he was old enough uh-huh. to be cognizant of that so you know the the fear that he felt for her you know that could have been at any point, they could have been like, "Hey, your mom's been freed," you know. They yeah. never did. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, again, Jedi, whatever. Like, they've got a very strict moral code that isn't really about morals. It's no. well, it's even even thing. even Obi says, and you kind of get a, a sense of what it was like for Obi Wan. He's like, "I think I had a brother. Like, I remember yeah. having a brother." And I'm like, "Oh, that's fucked up." Like. Because, like, you kind of start to realize the Jedi aren't necessarily we fully, think, like, good. Yeah, we think of them as mm-hmm. the good guys, but, like, they've been mm-hmm. doing some shady shit. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're working for the greater good, for yeah. sure. But so is the town in uh, Hot Fuzz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> That's a great way to compare. That's a good reference. Yes. <laughs> um. So uh, let me just uh, bring back Qui Gon real quick. I think like the fact that he rebelled against the uh, you know Yoda and all the the higher Jedi's and said like I'm still gonna train this kid like whether you guys mm-hmm. like it or not. Mm-hmm. I feel like that just thinking about that should have changed Obi Wan's perspective on. The, mm-hmm. the areas of morality and the gray areas like yeah like there is black and white but there's also the gray areas that we need to like sometimes we need to step in and need to do whatever it takes you know um, right which brings me to my last question about Qui-Gon do we expect him to pop up in this la- last two episodes I think he'll be in the he'll his voice will be in the last episode. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here's 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 why. Let me break it down. Okay. So, um, he's because we see at the beginning of episode three that Obi Wan is trying because he's like, help me. Like mm-hmm. Anakin, he's like Anakin's back. He's coming. Like help me. And I'm like. He's totally pulling like if you if you watch Avatar or Legend of Korra, he's totally pulling like the trying to connect with the spirits. Yeah. And I'm like I'm like, yep, it's gonna happen in the last episode. And also, we know that Liam Neeson is coming back for another series called Tales of the Jedi. Um, Which is interesting w- because he said, and I quote, mm-hmm. like, I won't be coming back he's, unless it's a movie. Mm-hmm. Right. He said, I don't want to do it unless it's a film because I don't yeah. want to do a like a series. But but eh, he lied. Yeah. So we we know he's coming back for Tales of a Jedi. So it could totally be plausible that he he did voiceover for like this and is just keeping it secret. Okay. Jess, what are your thoughts? I I'm pretty close with um with Ethan on that one. However, 
I think that it doesn't take a lot to take a pensive uh, shot of Qui-Gon from the prequels and make mm. it parent. Like, make, make it like a force <laughs> <gun. laughs> You know, somewhere just in the distance? I mean... I, 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 that would be a cop-out. Mm-hmm. Like, just like a voiceover and then we see, like, a pensive... Quite in, I mean, in the background. We just see him like I mean, fifty miles out. Like, we, yeah, we, I'm here. we okay. To be fair, we did see a burned up Anakin Skywalker we in did. a cloak we in did. like Episode Three, <laughs> but it was actually Hayden, though it wasn't like superimposed. But yeah, that was mm-hmm. cool. very cool. But yeah, I'm like, I I could totally see they did it for Return of the Jedi. Why not just do it? You know, here too. We know. They're not against reusing film mm-hmm. because they used Alex McGinnis's voice mm-hmm. uh, to talk to Ray. Mm-hmm. So we know that they're capable of it. Um, not to mention Leia, Leia's whole part in Rise of Skywalker was basically just film that was yep. reused. Yep. So, which is fine. Yeah. Which is totally fine. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Anyway, yeah, but you know, I, mm-hmm. I think that we're definitely going to see. <laughs> yeah, we're totally going to see. Um, I think we're going to see some some communication from Qui Gon for sure. Um, I don't know what form that's going to take yet, uh, because again, we have two episodes left, which does not feel like enough. I know. Um, hey, no. <laughs> no, I need like six seasons. But but here's the thing: there, it doesn't feel like it's enough. But given what the first three episodes have done, I'm like, okay, I have faith that you guys know where you're you're putting these characters. Yeah. But like, also take a page out of Stranger Things and just make each episode like <laughs> three hours long. You know. I. I okay. I love that in the first episode, it it was like because I, I rewatched the prequels and then it was like, here's a recap of the prequels. Yes. And I'm like, yeah. So good. Mm-hmm. So good. Um, I for one, I'm I'm very hopeful that we see Liam Neeson as a Force Ghost. Like uh, he just yeah. has to come back because you set it up in Episode Three at the end where yeah. Yoda's like, "Yeah, Qui Gon's been he's reached immortality essentially, and he's now able to come back as a Force Ghost." Yeah, they have a whole episode. They have a whole arc in. One of in season six of the Cone Wars where they kind of show it where Yoda learns how to do it, and okay. it's yeah, interesting. Well, I guess mm-hmm. I probably should have watched Clone Wars. <laughs> well, oh, he doesn't learn, it. Like... he doesn't learn how to do it, but he learns that Qui Gon is still alive in a sense. He, he learns that Qui Gon is like still there, okay. Clone yeah. Wars is good Star Wars, highly recommend. Yeah, it is really it's good Star Wars. Style. I can't stand the art style, it gets yeah. better. It you get over it. Over. Okay. Yeah. All right. Eventually, eventually, it gets more as it progresses. It got more modern, and it gets like way less noticeable in like the seasons that actually matter. I'll tell you what: if part six isn't a letdown, I'll watch Clone Wars. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. If they decide I mean, to screw yeah. me, anyway, if, nah, if they decide to screw <laughs> no. me with like putting my hopes up and this being one of the greatest Star Wars. TV shows we've gotten, you know, post Disney, then yeah, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, we're going to go back. To, yeah, that was a <laughs> lot. That was a lot. We're going to go back mm-hmm. to the summaries, guys. Um, Tala provides a distraction to save Kenobi, but Leia is captured by Reva. And, you know, I have a question here. At, mm-hmm. We kind of already touched it. Thoughts on Reva? I really hate that she's really into parkour, but other than that, she's been doing really, really great. I think that she has shown anger. We why we don't really see why she's so angry. I am kind of glad that we're seeing it, even if even to the point where like, yeah, you're gonna get in trouble with Darth Vader. You realize this, right? Like, you just killed the Grand Inquisitor. She gives no fucks whatsoever. He's not dead, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, she yeah. thinks he is. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Y- yeah. She that shocked me too. I was like, oh my god. But yeah. She's like so- she's 
she is a hundred percent operating off of out of spite and a fear mm-hmm. and not a fear, but like a, 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 a drive for revenge. The Jedi order let her down. She was, Definitely mm-hmm. one of the younglings. Allegedly, who, allegedly. Yes. N- just definitely. Allegedly, allegedly. Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll see. Okay. Sure. The hate that she has for the Jedi and the way that she talks about them, because she doesn't just say like, you know, um, you're going to be like, we'll let you home. Like she specifically is like, I'm going to tear down this person because their order is full of cowards run yeah but what if that's just like her dad left her to become a jedi you know jess jess you just made something click in my head and if they do it oh my gosh so you know that in different in different things of star wars we see obi-wan's holocron message like he's like and the jedi order like we're 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 scattered but like we'll try to be okay like that's this whole thing i wonder if at some point she found one and she was like, this guy says we're going to be fine. And then she got caught by the inquisitors. Yeah. So she, har- she harbors so much hate from sh- not as much hate as Anakin does for Obi-Wan, but she, Pretty up uh, there. she's up there. And I'm like, this is a girl who is very aware that Obi-Wan failed the like failed. And I'm like, and that just clicked in my head. I'm like, I want to see, not necessarily like, a, I wish we could see like a flashback of her on the streets. Like, I want a whole episode of just her origin I, story. I don't know if they're going to spell it out for us. Mm-hmm. See if you know, they put them in the back of the tank not. again. Probably not. <laughs> well, she would have to go in the back of the tank. No, if that. we just see Obi Wan in the back of the tank, all right, guys, my arm is really killing me. I gotta go back in there, and then we just like <laughs> yeah, progress the story, um, you know. But I do think uh, she is like t- definitely top three of the people that are upset at Obi Wan. Obviously, number one being Darth Vader slash Anakin. Yeah, okay, I could see, I could definitely see that. Number three, obviously, being. Obi Wan's sorry, Ben's boss. Like this fucking guy didn't even show up to work, and then Check find out. out he's been stealing from me. Like, come on, you got to be kidding me. He's not even a good thief. He's not. <laughs> like he's doing yeah. it out in the open for everybody to see. You know, uh. maybe it's a perk. It could be. It could be like that. Nobody just, takes advantage of. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to get in trouble. Obi-Wan, I gotta save that Obi-Wan's money. Got, you know? that, got that Sky, that Skyrim hack. He's got the infinite like <laughs> stealth. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking like, hey, if you can do this, but we're we're definitely taking it out of your pay. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like everybody I mean, else is like scrounging for credits. And they have like, families. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> Obi-Wan's like, I got a camel to feed. Like this guy's taking me to and from work. I got to make sure this guy survives. Um, so I, I guess we're all kind of pretty much on the same page of Reva being one of the younglings and Obi Wan. Yeah, for Yoda too, though. Like, why is she not like? Let's fucking get this Yoda guy. Okay, but Yoda is way better at hiding him. So this is true. This is true. But- if if okay if Yoda Yoda is like the method actor of the Jedi he's like I'm in character I'm just on this swap planet and and no one can find me cuz I'm the only person here I'm just saying like if I am going to be upset at an organization I'm not going to go for middle management I'm going straight to the top okay Obi uh not Obi-Wan Yoda is like bro you should have seen this shit coming a mile away like you're the reason why I'm fucking here, and you're out there in the fucking swamps chilling out. Yeah, but but Yoda got his ass. Okay, uh, arguably Yoda got his ass handed to him by the Emperor. He had Very to, much. He had mm-hmm. a sudden. So he did not have a victory necessarily. He s- survived. Um, Obi Wan had a a victory. Like, it wasn't a victory yeah, to yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. But you're right. From their perspective, Obi Wan won. Yeah. Like he legit won. He he, he very definitively won that yes, one. Yes. So, I mean, so, until he thought Anakin was dead for ten years, 
because that moment where she says, and he's alive, and it's like, uh oh, I, I, he's like, I fucked up. Yep. You know what's, what's yeah. interesting about that is that the, like, she knew that he didn't know. You know, right. he's he's been so off the grid. Like he's also been very off the grid. Um, you know, it, it's that that might just be a plot hole when I think about it. Yeah, but, I mean, you're telling me in ten years there's no way you heard of Darth Vader. Well, yeah, he might that, have, but he's not aware of who exactly he is. I, I mean, think he's he is. Checked out. No, no I think he is because I, if I remember correctly, in episode three, they are already calling him Vader before mm-hmm. uh, the fight scene. Okay, but they okay, do, so, they do. Yeah, because because when Palpatine calls the Separatists and is like, "My new apprentice, Darth Vader, is Darth going Vader. to come," um, but when murder does he all of him? you. When does he dub? Does he dub him? He dubs. He he dubs him in the Chancellor's office after he kills Windu. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or in his office after he kills Windu. He's like, you are Darth Vader, rise. So how many people know? Like, So my theory, because we, we don't really have, com- is that the Inquisitors are aware. The, the yeah. Inquisitors, at, at the least, are ve- are aware that he is Anakin. Anakin Skywalker. Turned mm-hmm. into Darth well, mm-hmm. Yeah, if they're, if they're turned... Mm-hmm. Jedi, they have to know. Yeah, yeah, especially if if Reva is a youngling and one of those younglings, and she ran into Anakin Skywalker, like she's aware. Yeah, but I think it's just the, the Inquisitors uh, and the Emperor Al- that know. Palpatine, yeah. Thrawn knows. Yeah, um, yeah. There's there's a few people that the main that circle know. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The inner mm-hmm. circle, I should Tar- say. Tarkin. Uh, also, everybody Tarkin who was around knows. that alley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god! That that scene where okay, that scene where they're running through like Obi Wan is running through the desert and the lightsaber ignites. Yeah. And you that just was... hear the breathe. Oh, that was so good. Just I've, Vader popping up out of nowhere, like, mm-hmm. bro, where the fuck did you come from? I just ran away from you, and you're just popping up in behind me. I didn't and hear you, you breathing before. Where the fuck? And you, you don't even see like his chest, like his like chest plate or whatever. Yeah. It's just like you hear the breathing, and then the music kicks, yeah. and then the lightsaber. Oh, so, so fucking good. good. So fucking. It, good. And mm-hmm. you know, he never, he never. We never see him run. We never see him move quickly. He always no. moves very slowly, very deliberately. Um, and that was one of the things, you know, when you play as Vader for, like, the first section of uh, the Force Unleashed games, mm-hmm. you know, you don't run. You just walk as you're Force-pushing Wookiees off of bridges. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, he's got very, like, hardcore Jason energy there. Yeah. You know, of, yeah. Um, He's, he's yeah. never running, but he's always right behind you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and all that breathing, like that breathing, and all and shit out like me. that that scene where Obi Wan is in the storage area or whatever, and he just sees Vader just wrecking shop, and he's like, he's coming, like, and you just have this like sense of dread. Kind of like a Friday the Thirteenth, the the video game, and you're just waiting for Jason. Yeah, like you, you just know he's coming. Yeah, oh, I also want to just point out how that droid repair shop um, looks very similar, but like in a dingy and dark way to the actual the when you go to Disneyland and like you go to Galaxy's Edge and build a droid, it looks very yes. similar to that. With the parts hanging from the ceiling yeah. and like that mm-hmm. aesthetic, it looks a lot like that. So that was a cool little like thing for me. Um, imagine being a kid like watching this and being like, "Mom, I've been I there." Before. There, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I guess I'm part of the path, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! If they integrate that into Galaxy's Quest somehow, mm-hmm. uh, I would be so. Uh, I'd I'd love be so it. Cool. But like, it's a secret thing that nobody knows about. Mm-hmm. You have to like find it yourself. 
you know? Or, like, imagine they make it a whole thing where, like, if you're older, like, you're running from the Inquisitors. Like, you're actually trying to escape somewhere. Like, that would actually be dope. That would be That'd nice. Be cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, part four. Uh, yes, we're still getting through this. That's fine. <laughs> but we're having a good conversation. Good conversation. We're having a good time. Good yeah. time. Uh, having escaped Vader, Obi Wan and Tala infiltrate the Inquisitor's stronghold, stronghold on the ocean moon of Nor, in the Mustafar system, to rescue Leia. Now being interrogated by Reva for details on the path, which we're getting girl. very close to the end of this episode, where she is about to do something to Leia. On that fucking machine. And I'm like, bro, what is going to R- happen? Ruben, have you played Fallen Order? Yes, I have. Okay. I haven't finished yeah. no spoilers. I won't spoil. I won't spoil. But Ruben knows. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just like, what happens when, like, if Anakin found out, sorry, if Darth Vader found out, like, that was your daughter and you just did all this shit to her, like, Oh my God! How? He would kill her. He, yeah, he would kill. He, he would kill. Would? Re, re, yes, he would he kill Reva. Mm-hmm. But, but he wouldn't stop. Her because, no, because he wants her to fall to the dark side. He but, wants her to. He he feels he would feel like she needs to suffer a to little be bit. where he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's a hundred percent the kind of person that I force yeah. choked your mother, uh, you know, before she had you guys. But like, I didn't kill her, you know. It was all Obi Wan that f- turned her yeah. against me, and her turning Obi Wan turning her against me is what actually killed her, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's textbook yeah, look what you made me do. Yes, I, mean, yes. I yeah. I had a hand in this, but you're the one. That made mm-hmm. me have a hand in this. Your, yeah. 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 You said something <laughs> that oh. made me do this. Um, insane. Absolutely insane. Um, during the infiltration, Obi-Wan discovers a trophy vault filled with the preserved corpses of Jedi oh, who have been captured God. and killed, including a youngling. And that's what I would have been like. Did this kid know Anakin too? Like, I, Probably. I, I think... I think that's one of the young ones from the first episode. Yeah, yeah, that's one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and what? Um, also, yeah, also, this kid definitely did not have a chance to hide. Like, if no. if it's me, no. I'm ditching the gigantic, very obvious young lean hat. Like, yep. first thing. Okay, you know what would have been really not funny because like it's fucked up, but it would have been a little funny if it was the young lean from like episode three. That's what like, are we to do? What are we going to do? I was like... I I feel like he was meant to, like, seem like that character. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm not saying there's not a bunch of little blonde youngling boys running around. Uh But it feels like it was a deliberate choice to make us think. There there was all kinds of references, though, to one of the, the Jedi in... In case a friend and I were talking, and it's Sanube from the Clone Wars, and his whole thing was he was like the slowest Jedi, and he has a, good, a really cool arc with Ahsoka in like the second season, where you get to know him, and and like you kind of fall in love with this dude because like he's like slow and steady. I mean, he's basically a turtle, so it's like Aesop, like tortoise in the hair, basically, yeah. and then just seeing him like. And it's just like, no, they got him. I mean, of course they did, but nah. And then the librarians, yeah, the librarians survived. What's up? Do you think that the youngling that was encased, well, killed and encased in in this stuff, um, is the thing that turned Reva? Like, yeah, I should probably like pay attention to what these guys say. I I I think. I think she got turned because she saw those around her die and yeah. she's like, I don't have a choice. Yeah. yeah. And we, I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know where Jess is in Fallen Order, so I won't say anything. But, like, <laughs> yeah. Just know that the, the droid is fucking it, adorable. That's all I got. Oh my god, BD1. Yes, I, my favorite droid. Him. I love every droid, but, like, 
Oh, so cute. Well, I'm getting <laughs> that was real my, sick that tired was of C-3PO, you know? That was legitimately... He has okay. Yeah, yeah. He, wa- but, he walks too slow and talks too much. That's all you leave say. him yeah. alone. That's all I gotta but, say. That's all I gotta say. Listen, CP- C-3PO <laughs> is the first gay icon I ever saw. Now leave him alone. Okay, all right, all right. That's <laughs> Okay. Like he was Anakin's first droid, and he was not working with the best equipment. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Poor guy. Yeah, Did but at the same like... time, like Leia, yeah. I'm pretty sure Leia had him now. Yeah. Yeah. Leia's He's a fucking that... princess of Alderaan. You're telling me she couldn't fucking afford to fix him up? Well, yeah, she technically did. she did. He, we Make him a little him faster, every... though. You know. Oh, I got you. Okay. Like you t- can't fucking. Mm-hmm. You know, put some wheels on those fucking feet. <laughs> some heelys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my god, uh, that's an image that'll never leave my head. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> um, while they are successfully uh, successful in freeing Leia, Tal's cover is blown and their presence is revealed. Um, I just want to say one thing here. I thought the whole scene where where. Uh, Obi Wan is just using the force to stop the water coming into this fucking hallway. Mm-hmm. Perfection, man. Mm-hmm. Perfection. Oh, I you know what? It. It, it, it was fantastic. So well done. I would like to, uh, you know, point out communicators more often more trouble than they're worth. Yep. 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 You're not efficient. They need yep. a mute function. Yep. <laughs> What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, they eventually escape with the help of the path commander, Roken, and his guerrilla troops. Vader is furious over the course of events and threatens to kill Reva, but spares her when she reveals that in an anticipation of a rescue, she had attached a tracker to Leia's companion, Droid mm-hmm. Lola. Oh. I was really hoping that she was lying just to save her own ass, but we see that focus in on Lola at the end and I'm like fuck, fuck and she you. goes evil I hate yeah, it I, I hate it too I was like no I was like Lola I mean it makes sense yes it does yeah it, it absolutely 100%. does it, she she knows that Obi-Wan's not dead and yeah. she knows that he hasn't like he has some sort of help so it makes and- sense and she's not above bugging a senator's child. Of course no. She wasn't above, yeah. to, you know, kidnapping a senator's child. Right. She's, she's like. <laughs> I get no shits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boundaries don't know. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, also that you mentioned it, Ruben, but Vader walking with purpose. Like, as soon as you hear his breathing again, and it's like, that, he was walking in that hallway and I was like I don't even think I've ever seen Vader move that quickly like and him like yelling at her yeah. and being like yeah you're you're dead yep. like it, you better tell me when I was something good in the next five seconds or your throat is like your neck is snapped like mm-hmm. I'm surprised I'm very surprised that he didn't like just break a limb you know break an arm yeah oh something yeah. But you know what? Here's 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 what I want to know. Here's and this is a little bit off topic, but like, when does he start doing the dad jokes? <laughs> Vader, right? <laughs> you know, maybe maybe it's after this, and he has an inkling that Leia is his, and he's like, "Oh, I got." Did, did he I, need the proximity I, to his child for the dad gene like, to activate yes, and for yes. him to be That's like exactly what it is? <laughs> he's like, "I gotta brush up, and I gotta like get it's like pun, if, like puns in." I'm feeling a certain way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where this is coming from, but. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, like, don't get it in choke there. on your aspiration. <laughs> yeah. I want it. When is it coming? Like, that would have been a really good one for Reva because, damn, like, yeah. she embodies that. <laughs> could, you imagine, could you imagine if they did, like, a callback? And he's like, guess who choked on their aspirations today? It's you. <laughs> All right. We're done. <laughs> Oh boy! It's, it's, uh, you know what? If I, if I can just have one, like just one dad joke as a treat. Mm, <laughs> yeah, you know, I would have. I would have liked to have seen uh, him 
do the uh, Hispanic parent entrance where he's just screaming out Reva's <laughs> full name. <laughs> And he's like, yeah. you get here this instant. And he just forced me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Would have been great. Um, <laughs> like, oh, God. Yeah. It would have been, really been real great. And of course, she has like six names because it's got to yeah. be very excessive, you know? Um, <laughs> with that being said, guys, it's time for final thoughts before we close out the show. Um, Trench coats make terrible disguises for hiding children. It doesn't work. Also, children that know that they're in a spot that they shouldn't be peeking through the fucking trench coat, but do it anyway. But I'm going to uh-huh. allow it because she's Leia. I'm going to allow it because she's Leia. She, she's, she would peek. I yeah, would have rather. Would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel like, hey, we can. We I came in this way. I can go back out the same way. Yeah, you know, uh, I I think it's interesting that what they're setting up for for the next episode, because we're definitely going to see, um, you know, this this what was basically a civilian resistance, um, become more of a militarized rebellion. Mm-hmm. Um, whether or not they were, this is the rebellion that has been involved with Bail Organa or not, um, you know. They were definitely very like we're not soldiers, and now they they're in it. So I, I'm curious to see if we see like some backup start to happen. Right. You know, like who's going to come to help? Because yeah. they are not they are not equipped to handle the threat that is coming for them. No. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I don't know. Ethan, my 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 thing um i agree with jess like i, I want to see what the if the path like maybe the path is like the first rebel alliance and then or, or bail like i said earlier like bail is involved but in leia just doesn't know like and it's just these different cells because in rebels we um we see that there there's a whole thing where they are working toward with a rebel cell but the cells are separate and don't really come mm-hmm. together until, and I wonder if this is the beginning of that. Like, this is how it starts. That's and they have to do it that way. They have to do it that way. Where does it fall in terms of rebels? Mm-hmm. I, no, I it's way, way before. It's way before because Leia's way in before. And she's, yeah. yeah she's, like, she's, like least... four, she's, she's like 14 in rebels. Like, like 12, 13, so. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. So, um, also, uh, one I I have to mention it. her her being able to stand up against. I love her so much. I just don't hurt this little girl. I love her. Yeah. Like, and th- that's me talking to the I say fans in air quotes. Like, do not hurt this little girl because she is amazing. Yeah. Like. What whatever happens, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know where this is gonna go. I mean, I know that these characters have bought armor to an extent, but um, I'm assuming that Reva is probably gonna be dead by the end of this series. I'm, um, I'm gonna make a bold prediction and say Obi Wan learns his lesson from Episode Three, the movie, and like, all right, I, I gotta do some. I gotta take her out. Aim for the head. Yeah. Yeah. Aim for the head. Yeah. It takes Thanos' advice. Mm, Yeah. Gotcha. But like, I, I don't know. I I don't know what to expect. And it's funny because I started watching this and I was like, yeah, you kind of know where everything's happening, but they're doing so much cool stuff. Like, even if it's just set up for like future things. Like, not to mention, and. Like they mentioned Quinlan Voss, like, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, that's cool!" Like, so he survived. Like, he's still out there doing stuff, and I'm like, "I don't know. I just I don't know what what to expect at the end." I mean, um, I, I don't know. Like, maybe we'll see like an end credits thing with like Darth Maul, and he's like out there looking because he know. is technically still out there. 
But we, we know, know that the rust is coming off of Obi Wan. Mm. We know that he's getting more comfortable yeah. in his Force powers. Mm-hmm. We know that he's getting better with the lightsaber. Um, I think. Do you guys think we see one more Vader fight before this yes. is over? Yeah. Yes. I'm thinking. One hundred percent. We see the Vader fight in Episode Six, and then that's when Qui Gon pops up as a, as a Force ghost, and he's just like, "Listen, you failed him, but like, you got to take care of these kids, you know." Right. Mm-hmm. You got to move on and realize yeah. that, yeah. Because we, we know in episode four, Vader says to him, when I left you, I was a learner, but now I'm a master. And I'm like, okay, so with this in context, are you talking about Mustafar or are you talking about episode six? Like what happened? What happens in episode six or I, wherever they place it, like they have to meet again. I feel yeah. like they would have to again for that line to make sense. Yeah, mm, yeah. Because right mm-hmm. now he's he is mm-hmm. more dominant, so he's mm-hmm. he would have to come from. Which, to be fair, like we know he is still very strong in the force, and he has not lost any bit of any connection. With no, him. but because he's he's dark side now, there there may be aspects that are not available to him. Like, honestly, I'm not 100% sure how that works. Like, I know that there are aspects of the light that you don't get with the dark, but, and then right. vice versa. But, um, you know, I, I, I feel like, I feel like we're going to get a little bit of a reset that happens. And I'm not exactly sure how that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. There's maybe another back to tank involved. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> the back tank is like the, the the save points in Fallen Order. It's like you know how they do like the flashbacks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I guess well, we got two episodes to find out what's what happens. Um, you know, Disney, do me a favor, just don't screw this up. You're, you're yeah, they won't. You say that, but we also got yeah. ep- episode nine. So I'm just saying, on episode eight. I mean. I don't think they're ever going to go into a series without a plan. Again. Listen, yeah, again, we'll, yeah, we'll no, see. we'll see. Because even even Book of Boba Fett, even though it you know it was kind of weak, it still told the story it wanted to at the end. You know, yeah, but like, is it was have, it a story we needed? I enjoyed it. It was a. <laughs> I enjoy it, but I enjoy all aspects. I even enjoy like part, I even enjoy episode episode Let 9. Let me rephrase. Yeah. Let me rephrase. Oh. Was it a story we needed that we couldn't fit into Mandalorian season 3? I think I think that it wanted to give us more world building in a way that is setting mm-hmm. Mandalorian season 3. Yeah. I understand what you're saying, Jess, but world building on Tatooine, we don't need okay. anymore. Okay. But 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 okay. it's a familiar setting for us though. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't All right. know. Okay, you're, technically you're I'm not wrong. myself there. You're not like wrong. a little bit. You're not wrong. <laughs> okay. I don't I don't know. Yeah. I I was thinking that during episode one when they showed the, the like Obi-Wan's like foundry thing. I'm like, wow, we really have this idea of what life on Tatooine is like because shit show. like like oh Boba Fett did it, episode one did it to an extent, like all of that. I'm like, this planet seems a lot bigger than like it used to because it's not just a big ball of dust. Like it was I mean <laughs> it is, but yeah, you know. There are people There's, on this ball of dust. The, the character arc for Tatooine is a thing that's yeah. happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, one last thing. Um, did you guys watch Bad Batch? Or yes. Any, okay. So, this whole... The whole hallway thing with the the Jedi, right? I I've seen this theory, and I'm kind of buying into it. They're using those corpses... Oh, that sucks to say. It's dark. The the corpses to clone for their cloning experiments. Oh, and you're you're yeah, and you're kind that. of you're starting. You're kind of starting to get this arc of okay, so they're using those, and then they lose those because eventually, I'm sure, eventually the fortress will get destroyed or whatever, and. 
then Bad Batch, you see they they hire on the um, Camino scientist yeah. who helped with with um, with the cloning process, and you're kind of starting to see this form of that's why they need Grogu in Mandalorian because mm-hmm. Ben he's like the last one. Yeah. So that's why he's so important. And I'm like, Oh, okay. This is all starting to make sense. And then eventually it leads to clones of Palpatine. Fuck. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's cool. I'm like, okay, they're, they're making that make sense. They're making that make more sense and yeah. they're making it sound way cooler. Yeah. Like, you know, it makes sense when you think about the fact that, you know, one of the ways that Palpatine initially was was seducing Anakin was this concept of immortality. And, mm-hmm. you know, cloning bodies, theoretically... Is immortality, you know, kind of. Right. Yeah. But also, mm-hmm. like, how do you transfer those force powers? Because we don't necessarily know that force powers are... Like, we know they're a little bit inheritable, but mm-hmm. it's, it's not, like, a sure thing. So Right harnessing the force in a way that you can transfer it to a cloned body. I think yeah. that's definitely something that we're seeing the empire really Cry. investigate, you know, really, that, really. And, and I guess theoretically they're successful in yeah. the end. It's like, they, it's <laughs> kind of like they figured out, Oh, it's kind of like riding a bike, but like, <laughs> you know, right. Something. And I'm just like, Part of me, too, and this is my, I really hope this happens eventually with all this, like, cloning stuff. I'm like, please bring back, just bring back Starkiller. Like, fingers crossed. He's he's right there. You guys are doing this story about, like, Jedi and Sith clones. Like, uh, and Sam Witwer, he's right here. And he looks exactly the same as his character did. Like, just, just do it. Like. Well, unfortunately, guys, it's time for a little segment called Plugs. Uh, we do, we have allotted the time for Star Wars. Thank you for joining us. Well, joining us, but also thank you, too, for joining me to talk about episode mm-hmm. 24 and apparently all of Star Wars. But again, <laughs> we had a good time. We had a great time. We had a great time. Um, Jess, where can people find you? So I am at Kikio1506 everywhere. Uh, I am currently playing through Jedi Fallen Order on Xbox Game Pass. So if you want to tweet at me how much you enjoy it, great. If you want to tweet at me about a specific instance, mm -mm, please don't. (laughs) Yeah, don't. Don't I almost did that. I did pretty much did that the other day, and I've been beating myself up ever since. Don't do that. (laughs) Okay, cool. Uh, Ethan, where can people find you? I'm at Ethan Brennan on Twitter and like pretty much everywhere else. I'm in the Kind of Funny Facebook group a lot. Um, But yeah, so that's where I'm at. And I am currently playing a lot of Ring Fit Adventure, so I'm sweating a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can find me here on Saturday afternoon, 1 o'clock. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Pacific, not p.m. Please don't show up at 10 p.m. Um, to live react with a book, a couple of the guys on the Xbox Bethesda showcase. But until then, oh fuck, I screwed that up. Until the next conquest, that that, that doesn't make any sense. Everyone, have a good night. <laughs> All right, have a good night. <laughs>